and Noah is really good at graphic design. So every time we needed to do something graphic design related, Noah did it, right? So problem solved. But then we started to think when we thought of like what we would change about the class, is like what if you needed a skill that someone on your team didn't have, but someone else in the class had? And how come the only collaboration that we have in the studio is when Nadia or Arjun move us from one team to another? Why don't we share our own ideas or our own skills? But how do you do that in an actual functional way? And how do you do that in a way that you would actually want to share your skills, but you're still getting something out of it by sharing your skills with someone else? So we came up with GLASS. <laughs> GLASS stands for the Georgetown Living Academy for Shared Studio. And I'm going to let everyone else explain to you how this is going to work. <laughs> OK, so the basic principle of our class um, is it's sort of an environment that operates online, like Craigslist, but prettier and less sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, kind of like a giant listserv where everyone who is in this class or one of the other classes that um, it's going to be a Studio Blades class, which after conversations with Maggie and Arjun, it seems like there's two other classes in addition to this class, which will all work together and collaborate on projects. And, um, members from all three different classes will be in each of these cohorts, which are like larger groups. Um, so the premise is that everyone in one of these three classes is going to have um, access to this site, which um, I guess is called class, and everyone can, they'll have to take some time at the beginning of the class to figure out what their skills that they think they can contribute to their group and to other groups are. So um, we had bunch of examples of things, which graphic design was obviously the first one we thought of because um, it's a lot of graphic design and design in the class, but also just like copy editing and proofreading or people who know how to code or um, people who know how to edit videos, photography, hand drawing versus, um, you know, like computer arts, if you're really knowledgeable about science or genetics, stuff like that. So basically anything for finance, um, any sort of specific skill which could somehow be helpful to someone in one of these classes. Uh, so they would have the opportunity then to publish a sort of advertisement about themselves, what they're offering and what their interests are, what kind of environment they work well in. And then on the flip side of that, if um, I'm in my group and we're working on a project and none of us know how to use video editing software, we could either A, go through and browse this listing of advertisements for someone who does know how to do, um, know how to edit videos, or B, there'd be another side of the site where you could post saying this is what we need. So you sort of have two ways to, if you're looking for something very specific, maybe you want to post what you need, whereas if you're just looking for something more general, you would scroll through all these people and there would obviously be a search function and some way to filter the results that you get. Um, and then, so we wanted to create some sort of incentive, I guess, to participate in this program, which, because we're thinking that initially people might not realize the value of it if you've never worked in a studio based environment. So our idea was to um, create a system of micro credits. So a macro credit is something like, in Georgetown, like we take three, this class is three credits, that's a macro credit. So that's one hour per week is one credit. So a micro credit is something much smaller, which theoretically can add up to macro credits. So our a rough estimate of what our micro credit system would be with every hour of exchange you participate in, so work you're doing for another team would be one micro credit. And when you get a bunch of micro credits, you receive something with Rio. So I can explain. Yeah, so okay, so I'm gonna be talking about this um, added credit that we came up with called the Studio Studio Based Learning Credit Program. S or SBL. Okay, just to back up. Why is this a good idea? Okay, just to backtrack a little. So Georgetown already has a CBL program, which is um, a community-based learning program. So that's basically, um, so classes, um, professors or students can apply to like have their classes, um, like get an extra like CBL credit through the CSJ. And, um, but the CBL um, primarily focuses on, um, like, on like learning through service and like social justice um, and um, the Center for Social Justice. Um, kind of like like works with the students and the professors to um, sort of like make sure like all of the like um, like service and social justice learning is like relevant to the course, and then they <coughs> the student will get their credit and like um, then on the transcript 
it will like say like, oh yeah, this student participated in a um, CBL course, um, et cetera, and like it will be not notated and like sort of like that. So um, <clears throat> what we thought of is like the studio-based learning course, no, studio-based learning credit, sorry. Um, it's sort of like this, <clears throat> so basically it's very similar to CBL, except um, instead of like learning through service and social justice, um, it would mainly focus on like students learning through um, like design thinking and um, like like thinking innovatively and like working on teams and like things that we've been working on like um, in this classroom. And yeah, um, so also another thing we were thinking is that we could partner or like the Ethics Institute could partner with um, outside institutions such as the, um, like the Beck Center or Arden's <coughs> consulting firm, Get My Day. <laughs> Um, so like, kind of like, um, basically like establish and like, like flesh out all of the um, like design thinking and like innovation related um, like learning and make sure it's like relevant to like the course. And yeah, so basically we kind of figured that um, for each like hour of like studio um, collaborative studio work that um, like a student puts in outside of the classroom. Um, they would be awarded one microcredit, like Noah said, and 15 microcredits, which is roughly like one um, hour of collaborative studio work per week for the entire semester, would translate into getting the SBL, which is like an oh, additional credit option. Um, so when we talked to Arjun about our idea, one thing that we kind of focused on is that our product isn't just the glasses stuff, our product is cultivating like an environment of collaboration within the studio. So for next semester, there's going to be three courses in here. So we are kind of thinking of it like, if glass is a glass terrarium, um, we're like planting the seeds and starting uh, a way for an ecosystem to grow. So we're putting in, by creating this like online system for collaboration, we're creating a method for students to start to meet each other and work with each other. And so like from that, something would grow like a tree. Um, and then by adding the microcrediting system, we're providing the incentive for students to begin to use the system. Um, but from there, it would be able to grow organically, how people um, begin to collaborate in studio and the types of projects they work on and how they develop their individual skill sets. Um, and then eventually, as Georgetown begins to evolve more and more studio-based learning classes in their curriculum, the tree would break through the class. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it would become <laughs> something more than just the system. So the system's a way to foster an environment of, of studio collaboration um, among students who aren't used to that in their typical academic environment. Um, and that's why we think the SBL is important, is to encourage students to become engaged with studio-based learning, um, whether it, at first it's in the three classes next semester, or if it expands to involve other classes that have been pre-approved that you could add a studio component. Um, but GLASS is really just a tool to foster that environment so that students have the ability to communicate with each other um, and share their skills so that eventually the studio becomes its own kind of like working ecosystem where everyone who's in classes that have studio components can work with each other and utilize each other's skills to create better products. So basically it's like a, our program is kind of like a way to transition from traditional learning to more studio-based learning. Yeah. Thanks. Do you have a rating system? Or? Well, we talked about doing, having people have, like have on their online profiles, having reviews or samples of past work. Um, That's something we still wanted to toy around with and get feedback from because yeah. we don't want it to develop into an overly competitive environment where it's like, this person's the best and like they're the only one who's getting reviews. Because people should be able to develop their skills as well. Who's going? Well, I should, so uh, with the uh, sorry, somebody else just appeared about this. But uh, how do you, at least initially, what's the value of an SBL? So like, it doesn't you don't need SBLs to graduate at least right now, right? So why would how is it sort of gamifying it in some way? But other than that, why, what's the incentive? You said that creates an incentive. 
Um, so the idea of having a full credit option is one, like we already have something like that existing and people do that with the CDL because an A worth three credits is worth less than an A worth four credits. So it ups the value of the course in terms of your GPA and like its standing in general. And we also thought it was an interesting way to look at the work that we were all putting into the studio as like over and above like what, I guess all of us came into this class having expectations and the amount of time we spent in the studio exceeded that and for people who are willing to give as much like a lot of time to the studio it's a good way of rewarding them and saying if you're getting an a or an a minus in this class it's not going to be worth three credits it's going to be worth four yeah and also it's like for people who aren't used to the environment it's like a system they're more familiar with kind of like oh i'm getting something in exchange that i have to show for it which like we were just thinking frankly like there are a bunch of people who think like that and their gpa is their motivating factor so in order just to initially make it appeal to more people also because um, like the SPL is notated on the transcripts, like it says that each like a student who's participated in like a studio based course like has this credit and um, it's on the transcript. Um, it can like show like people that the student might like send the transcript to after graduation, like employers or like graduate schools, and like sh and, and it will show them that like oh this student has like engaged in like design like this like design thinking class and like has probably like experience with like really cool ways of like thinking that maybe like other traditional students may not. Yeah, um, have you ever found it by like the registrar's office by any chance? Because it seems weird that you could get credit, like an extra credit of A for it because you got an A, if like you, you got an A for three credits of work that you did, not for uh, an extra 15. So basically, we, we haven't had a chance yet because we recently came up with this as our system, um, but we're basically going off of the CBL model. So for the CBL, you get the fourth credit for the class when you complete the CBL, and so then that your A for that class counts as more. But when we looked into the specific requirements for what constitutes a CBL, we do, we thought this probably wouldn't fit in. So we wanted to create like a similar system to the CBL, but that was instead of community focused, was studio focused. And in terms of just the more technical aspect of this, so obviously the CBL thing exists, but it's also like I've heard from a few students that professors have the ability to raise the like make a three credit class or four credits. This might only have been an SFS class where someone did like an extra twenty page research paper and therefore the class went from three credits to four credits. So we have to look into the technical side of this. But given the amount of innovation going on in Georgetown and the fact that they're now introducing more and more like one credit classes themselves, instead of creating like a one credit class that this would be part of, like a class scale thing, it's just a good way of incorporating it within this whole like studio environment. Um, I was just gonna ask you like I registered for CBL for the course this semester and I ended up not taking it. And I like the concept of like the SBL and I like the concept of everybody like working and other people in the class working. But I don't understand how like the smaller credit or like the like, micro credit really necessarily applies because from what I understood is like CBL courses, I don't know, it's just like when you go into it, it's a four credit class and that's because the course incorporates so much like community-based learning, so like volunteer work and stuff, and it's just extra work that they consider it four credits. It's not like, oh, some of you are gonna get three credits and like those who are better are gonna get four. So I'm just wondering if like you could just do that without kind of micro credit and it would still almost be approved by the registrar because there is a huge another aspect to our learning here and it does require extra time. Yeah, um, definitely. So when we were researching um, like the CBL model, um, <clears throat> a thing that we came across was that like professors can apply to like to the CSJ to like have their course like up to one credit like the <coughs> CBL program, but also like students taking kind of like a relevant like course, say in like um like labor rights or etc. Like if they feel that like um <clears throat> their studies can like better be complemented like outside of the classroom like through the like CBL program, they can also like apply. Um, and then they also they can also receive the credit, so that's kind of like the method we were going off. We also were just unsure how much. I guess it, we, we were hoping for feedback on this, but how willing people would be to put their services forth and spend their time if there wasn't any 